I come from a family of ocean lovers, so I started swimming and diving at a very early age. And, and then this has been a passion all my life. So I studied marine environment and I have a master in environmental science and, and then I was a dive instructor and I was looking for a project uh, where I could um, put together my passion for the ocean, what I studied, so my background, but also my passion for teaching and being with people and um, try to do also something important and when this opportunity of being involved in a coral restoration project came almost 10 years ago, I thought it was a dream come true. <laughs> a few years after um, I've been working here as a dive instructor, we came with the idea, together with a group of passionate divers, a local dive shop, we came with the idea of coral restoration project in Bonaire, um, in partnership with uh, Coral Restoration Foundation in Florida Keys, we decided to start a coral restoration project here in Bonaire. So in 2012, we found what is now called Reef Renewal Bonaire. What we should do, we should try to protect what we have because it's way easier to protect what we have than rebuild it from scratch. So we can only work on some coral species and trying to bring back uh, some marine creatures, but ecosystems are incredibly rich and biodiverse ecosystems. So when we destroy the full ecosystem, it's very hard to bring it back. So we need to work together with Marine Park, with the government, to try to eliminate the stress of their killing coral reefs. The level of degradation is so high that even if we reduce the stressor, some coral species might not come back. So we also need coral restoration, try to keep the population above the critical number that when condition will improve, also the population will start regrowing on its own. So we definitely need to work on water quality, in particular in Bonaire, um, because poor water quality is what brings algae on the reef, increase of nutrients and of course algae cover. And then we also bring more bacteria and viruses again on the reef, so we bring diseases. So paramount is to work locally on water quality. And then of course globally we need to work on CO2 emission and uh, um, try to stop climate change or at least slow down. Yeah, in particular for Bonaire I would say uh, water treatment, so wastewater treatment, but also runoff and in particular that we experienced this year with heavy rain, we saw a lot of sediments flowing in the water, in particular in the town area and sediment not, not only suffocates coral but brings a lot of anthropogenic uh, chemicals in the water. Um, sometimes people think, oh hurricanes are incredibly devastating, but hurricanes are natural phenomenon and they always been there, right? In the past, when we had big waves and storms, coral were breaking and we have fragments all over the place. But if conditions were uh, still okay or good on the reef, corals were we able to reattach and grow again. The problem is nowadays we have a lot of algae and we have diseases, so it's harder for the coral reefs to come back and recover. So it's not just one stressor, but it's the synergy of all of that. The main goal of the project is to assist the natural recovery of coral reefs. Uh, we are focusing mainly on threatened coral species and we propagate thousands and thousands of corals in our coral nurseries using two methods actually, both coral gardening and larva propagation. And then we all plant these corals back to the reef in areas that are degraded and they are not so pristine as they were before. One is called coral gardening because it resembles what also people do on land in reforestation projects. So we, we fragment corals in coral nursery, mainly cutting them, and uh, little pieces of frag coral fragments can grow back to big sizes. So that's how from 
original few hundreds of corals. Nowadays we have more than 15,000 corals growing at any given time in our nurseries. Once the corals reach proper size, we will plant them back to the reef. We also use another technique that is called larva propagation and it's slightly different in coral garden because in coral gardening when we cut corals we are cloning them so we are not adding diversity to the stock that we're bringing back to the reef although we work with more than 50 different strains we're still working all the time with these 50 different strains during coral gardening in larva propagation we are trying to help the corals to sexually reproduce so the offspring is always a unique individual with a unique DNA a new strain so through larva propagation we actually add in biodiversity to the coral population on the reef so how does it work most of the corals reproduce um, during spawning time right during spawning they release eggs and sperms through cross fertilization uh, a little baby coral, baby larva, I would say, uh, get developed and then start scouting the reef until they find a suitable spot where to settle and grow again. This process in nature is very inefficient because we don't have so many corals left anymore. Also, environmental conditions are not so good anymore. So in larva propagation, we are helping them. How? We collect eggs and sperms and on land, we facilitate the fertilization in a designed pool in the ocean this pool were designed by uh, Secor International one of our partners we rear the larvae and we facilitate the settlement on tiles called seeding units once the little larvae start growing settle and start growing a baby coral then we outplant the tiles on the reef so in coral garden we're now working on five different coral species two acropora so branching corals and three different uh, massive corals orbicella faviolata nullaris and montastria cavernosa those are the species that we work uh, via fragmentation and in larva propagation we work with any species of coral that spawn so we are lucky because normally people that get to Bonaire are ocean lovers. Whether they are resident or tourists, most of the time they come here because they feel the, the, the ocean call, I would say. So we involve people uh, through the dive shop that are supporting the foundation. So if people are interested in becoming, for example, volunteers, they get trained uh, by one of our dive shop uh, members and they train and get certified as reef renewal divers once they are trained they get in contact with me and they become part of the volunteer team doesn't matter if they are resident on the island or tourists um, you know for us even if you can just dedicate one dive you're really making a difference so uh, there is a different level of involvement there are people that come here maybe two weeks every year or maybe three months every year or residents and they love to be part of the project. People can adopt a coral or a nursery tree or a small portion of restore the reef. This is a way for us not only to uh, have financial support, of course, but to promote awareness. I think if we give this feeling of ownership to people, people tend to protect them more and care more. So we love the idea that people feel responsible for one coral or a tree or a little piece of reef because that makes it's very nice also to follow up with them and let them know how the corals are doing. If people care, then they tend to protect, right? You protect what you love. So the course is a very hands-on experience because we designed that course to train our volunteers. So during the class, which is a one and a half day uh, class or training, uh, they do three dives and also there are three modules of theory where they learn how to handle coral, how to propagate corals, how to outplant. Some people, like you said, they live far from here, they can't recognize what they see on the water, whether it's a sponge or a coral or a degraded reef versus a pristine reef. So at the end of this class, it's beautiful to see people going diving and then come back and let me know I saw at that side such beautiful corals thriving and living while maybe at this side I saw some degradation. You know, it's a way for people to 
to learn about the problem and the more people acknowledge the problem the more people will be involved in trying to solve it so uh, i think the main limit of this foundation at the moment is resources of course the pandemic didn't help because we have a lot of financial support from private donation of tourists and visitors that come on the island and love the project so they like to sponsor it uh, unfortunately we didn't have almost tourists this year in Bonaire so we lost uh, a good portion of financial support um, so I would say that's the main uh, limitation right because we can recruit a lot of volunteers but we still need staff to be able to train them to coordinate them we need boats we need you know logistic um, there are a lot of businesses that live out of the reef right so dive shops hotel resort tours the tourist uh, guides so we all need to kind of chip in and support uh, nature protection and restoration since we have been doing this now for many years, it happened to receive a lot of uh, inquiries like from other countries, which is beautiful, or other islands. They were asking us, how you do it? Can you help us to develop a similar project in our, um, in our country? Uh, so we decided to establish an international network, and it's called Reef Renewal International, and we use it exactly for this goal, to try to support other places around the world that wants to learn more. And most of the time we invite them to come to Bonaire to learn and train them and we exchange information. And the main reason why we decided to do that is that we don't have time. Uh, reef degradation is happening very fast and we cannot have every country or every foundation that wants to start something new having to start from zero and since we already walked the path we feel like that if we empower other people to do the same in a faster way we can all reach uh, bigger goals life depends on the ocean so i believe we need to promote more reef conservation and education i'm not only talking about youth or the next generation future generation the problem needs to be addressed today actually we are running late we are losing reef at very fast speed uh, and there are still people that don't know about it for example people that live far from the reef uh, but still the decision and their everyday choices can have a positive or negative impact on the reef. So we need to have everybody or at least more people uh, aware and on board in terms of conservation action. We will, the crates are right below here. We have five. So we will start carrying each of us, five of us, we grab one and we start crossing the restoration site that is right in that direction, like two minutes. We will...